and welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report. As you can tell, we have weather here in North Texas and that has been the rule for about the last six weeks. This is October 9th and as you can see, uh, we're in from the, in from the rain here. Uh, there's a lot going on in the fly bar itself with redesigning the, the fly bar to make it look a little better. Um, you know, you guys deserve an upgrade every once in a while. And so that's what's going on in the background over here is a lot of changes back there we're going to change the show from a daytime morning time thing to a nighttime with probably lighting well i have to have some lighting it's pretty dark out here otherwise with the lighting perspective is going to change and and we're just you know it's one of those things i say we it's really just me back here uh what i want to do is i want to change things up over time you know unfortunately it's much easier to not change things than it is to really shake things up. And I got kind of lulled into that. We're not going to do that anymore. We're going to start changing pretty quickly and it leads on into next year. Uh, we're, I'm tentatively changing the name of TexasFlyCaster.com to TexasFly.Fishing. Thinking about that. If there's any gurus out there who have an idea of whether that will be better or worse, let me know. It's so far when it comes to search uh, perspective and Google search, uh, Texas Flycaster is a website that's 11 years old and has roughly 500,000 words about fly fishing on it and it ranks on third page, which really sucks for all the work I've put into it over all these years. Sick and tired of me on third page, Google. Uh, I should be number one, number one. So if that doesn't start to straighten itself out, there's gonna be even more changes because after all these years and, and that poor of a ranking, I was ranked number one for several years and then they changed the algorithms and a dead website is ranked number one, one that's never used so or never changes. So anyway, that's my little bone to chew. Otherwise, I just got back from the Texas Gulf Coast. I was in Galveston and the only two things I can say is there's a lot of water in there. It's a new moon. It's a lot of water. There's a lot of people on the weekend. It's insane the number of people that are there, conventional fishermen, uh, beyond anything I've ever seen before. And obviously the mild weather has a lot to do with it. What these guys are doing, these are conventional guys, and what they do is they wade out there about, I don't know, 200 yards into the flats on the bay side, and they're three millimeter neoprenes, and uh, go after trout. Well, typically when the water's lower, not so much into the marsh, uh, there's tons of redfish to catch right along that grass line 10 feet off the shore. So whatever. It didn't happen this time. I got onto one slick because I couldn't find any reds in the deep water. I mean, it was waist deep at the shore almost. Uh, it was pretty bad uh, conditions. Uh, and caught one speckled trout off a slick and then I was pretty much done. I just couldn't stand the crowds. I went over to the surf side and caught a handful of skipjack which is a poor man's tarpon that's what we call them in texas very very fun those are fun fish to catch and they were about that long too they were pretty decent size for a skipjack so anyway that's what i did over the weekend i always want to hear what you guys are doing um, i'm not going to scroll anything at the end of this report because it's tuesday already in two days the new report comes out so what i want to do is combine a, a couple of things uh, coming up probably this weekend I'll shoot another one of these reports so it'll be two back-to-backs pretty close and there may be something in between actually I'll tell you about that in a minute but um, the things that are back-to-back and -back the next report is going to include I'm going to uh, Possum Kingdom the dam tomorrow PK is what we call it, PK dam and that's the continuation of the Brazos River below Possum Kingdom Lake it's a really cool spot um, it's off and on based on basically a restocking when they opened the dam and let it rip like they did about a week and a half ago week ago it lets a lot of new fish down in there and they get hungry really quickly because a lot of the bait fish doesn't survive the fall or the churn and so that's going to be fun that's tomorrow and i want to put that hopefully with my next texas fly fishing report coming up later this week this weekend whatever with the scroll on it and uh, so that'll be some local information to go with the statewide information. Statewide, just a quickie on this. If the lakes say 100% full, that means usually right now they're more than 100% full. There should be some releases coming, except that down 
river to the next chain, next lake on the chain is also full. So we can't cause flooding. We, we're holding at the top, which is Ray Roberts. Uh, that's the Trinity River Basin. Um, I'm sure that's going on elsewhere. Pouring rain today, we probably had an inch and a half today, uh, which is Tuesday. And uh, I can uh, kind of tell it's lightening up a little bit, but uh, it's supposed to quit overnight. This is a cool front. This is spawned by a cool front. Our first real cool front of 2018 fall. Cool fronts are, are very important to us in fly fishing and fishing in general because what they do is they trigger activity. Temperatures go down in the water and then the activity goes up and the fish come up from, from deep to shallow. So my perspective on this and what I do is I typically in the summer months guide for carp. Well that's pretty much over and done with. So what I'm going to do now is shift gears and I shift gears over to bass on their last feed before they go basically dormant. And the fly I've been tying a lot of and I sell these at Pops Fly Shop. This is a black on black jig hook clouser minnow. You can't buy these at the store folks. You can only get these from me or tie them yourself. Try it, you'll like it. That's all I can say. Very good fly for bass in all conditions and hopefully tomorrow we'll get some video or some photography of uh, sand bass and stripers the same fly because that's what you're after and that's what you get a lot of below the dam at PK. That's what's going on. I have two other things to tell you. Well, actually only one thing left. I'm such a fast talker. One other thing to tell you, uh, Oktoberfest is out and that's a good thing. And actually, a good Oktoberfest right now, there's two of them. One is, believe it or not, Shiner's not bad. And number two is the, uh, the guys at St. Arnold came out with a good one. Now I've heard over in Houston, this is a secret, I've heard over in Houston that they're now distributing canned Eighth Wonder beers. And you, if you haven't had an Eighth Wonder beer, make sure you get one of those. It's all good. Doesn't matter what it is, it's good. Last detail as we as we get ready for the next episode coming out, whenever, we'll, probably between all this, we're gonna do an episode of one of these, un, what do they call it, unboxing? We're gonna unbox, unbox what's in the box. And what is in the box is a pair of, of Sosso, um new wading boots. I. Uh, have tried out their flip-flops and they were on sale. They're really great, really inexpensive. They really grip. And so now we're gonna we're gonna soft science. And so what we're gonna do is and that's the brand name, soft science. Too many things going on in my head right now. Uh, open this up, take a look at these, and then what I'm gonna do is put them to the test. Because without putting these to the test, how will you ever know what you've got? Yes. It should be interesting. One last detail. I used the Axiom 2 TFO fly rod when I was out in uh, Galveston over the weekend. I could rip off 85 foot casts with no problem. I, was, I was, never had a call for distance until now and almost all the fly line. So take that to the bank on the TFO Axiom 2. I, you know, it's just amazing. It's an amazing rod. I didn't know if it would do anything like that, but it, it makes me look good. And I was standing, keep in mind now, I'm standing in water about this deep to do that. So casting 85 feet in water that deep is a little bit of a challenge. Um, I'm not saying I'm a great caster or anything. Uh, I think I know what I'm doing, but uh, that rod makes a big difference. Thanks for watching the Texas Fly Report. Please visit texasflycaster.com and please do that soon because that's where you find more detailed information. There's information about Guadalupe River Trout Unlimited. They're having a meeting. There's a new opening of a store in uh, Blue River, Oklahoma. A store that's a reopening, a re new ownership there. 
Uh, there's going to be trips to Beaver's Bend coming up in the next two months. There's all kinds of things and not all of them make video because this stuff is challenging. It's hard so it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and there are just times when the words come a lot easier than the video. Thanks for watching. Have a great week and look back on the weekend to the YouTube Fly channel. YouTube Fly. <laughs> Texas Flycaster YouTube channel, blah, blah. And uh, we'll have another video or two out between now and next Tuesday. Thanks for watching.